Welcome back to Paint Society. On this episode, I'm going to show you a little trick to get a little bit better, cleaner silver metallic paint job. Don't overthink it. It's just paint. And thank you for joining me once again on this episode. If you're new to the channel, this is the channel where you can learn if you're a do-yourselfer, hobbyist, or at the professional level. Today in the booth, what we have is a whole front end and a blend into the door. So what I'm gonna teach you today is how to seal and then how to do your blend. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be minimizing the amount of blending. We're only gonna be blending into the door. So we're gonna seal this all off. So right now, what we have to do is get this masked up. But before, let's talk about what we have going on here. So this car was a little bit hacked up. There was a front bumper that had all Bondo on it. And then there was the fender that they had the glue tab and everything. It was a real, real mess. So this fender right here, we cut it in and we put a coat of base and clear on it just so that it would be easier to cover. Now, if we're looking here, we can see that there's been paint work done before. This is kind of greener, all right? And this is a little bit more redder. It's the fender we cut in, which is the correct color. This is the OEM color, which matches pretty good. And there was a blend here at one point. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be sealing the whole front end. Now on this particular hood, we talked the customer into fixing all the rock chips so we wouldn't have to blend. The blend was paid by insurance, but we don't want to blend on rock chips. So fortunately, the customer did uh, go ahead and give us the time we needed to completely strip and primer the whole entire hood. I went ahead and I fixed a couple different areas, but enough talking. Let's get to masking this off and sealing her up. Now, let me show you right here the most skipped and simple step that most painters do not perform. All it is, is masking off your blend panels when it comes to blending car paint. Our two doors, our passenger side and our driver side front doors are our blend panels. And these are the areas where we're blending automotive paint to make the car and the repair look seamless with the color. Since no two colors are ever the same, we need to blend, okay? Now, what we're going to be doing here is I'm going to be sealing. And let's say we did not mask off our blend panels. All the sealer you're seeing right here will get all the overspray onto our blend panels and we are gonna lose all that room to cover it. So let's do the dirty work first. Let's get all of our panels that we worked on covered. Let's get them all in the correct color first and then let's pull off that masking paper and do our blend, which I'm gonna show you. Now this is a 3M gun. We're running a 1.2 fluid tip on this paint gun and it's laying down a beautiful flat coat of sealer. And I love sealer. It's the best substrate for base coat, but we don't want it all over our blend panels. Let's say we're not using sealer. The rules still apply to using this step. You do not want all the overspray all over your doors. If you do not use sealer, you're probably gonna have two extra more coats of base coat to cover everything up. Whereas with sealer, we're just using two and you're getting that much better protection underneath the paint. At this point, what we're gonna be doing is we mix up our base coat, which is NH789M, and we're adding extra slow reducer. It is about 98 degrees in the paint booth, okay? It is very hot. And what this is going to do, this extra slow reducer, it's going to keep the paint wetter as it hits the surface. How does the paint gun work? It atomizes the paint through air. What does air do to anything? It dries. So if air is drying the paint, we want the paint to dry at a less rapid rate. At a less rapid rate, it's hitting the panel wet. When the paint hits the panel wet, what is it doing? It's laying down smoother. It's not sand piling. It's giving you nice, even finish. It's not gonna have any model or anything like that. But again, we don't want all that on our blend panels. This is two coats of paint put down. I only showed you one. So now we're ready to go ahead and take off our masking paper. And we can see we have a beautiful 
blend panel that is ready to receive only maybe a coat, a coat and a half of base, and then it is golden. And by doing this, once again, we are eliminating something called sand piling, an excessive amount of paint on our blend panels. What does sand piling equate to? Well, if you have an excessive amount of paint that's dry, it's gonna look darker, and that shows you a halo in the paint, and from a distance, when the sun's out, it does not look good. So on this door, I went ahead and did some small repair, and we're gonna cover those areas up first, and then we're gonna go over to the driver's side door, and I like to blend in an X-style pattern. And what an X-style pattern is, is pretty much a 45 degree angle one way, and a 45 degree angle the other way. You never want to stop abruptly. You can see I don't trigger off my paint gun. I just keep it going and I blend one way and then I blend the other way. And you see how effortlessly this paint is blending. So now I can concentrate on my blends instead of having to paint the whole entire front end and then blend at the same time when what will happen is your fender and your hood will not be covered but your doors will be because they have the right shade already underneath. It has the color underneath. We're just blending our color from the fender and the hood into the door itself. And while you might notice a little dent on the bottom of that door, we did give the customer the option first and they didn't decide until, well, the paint job was done that they did wanna go ahead and fix that dent. And well, in this case, PDR is the best case scenario for any sort of damage you have. You always wanna go ahead and talk to the customer first before painting over a dent. We don't like to do that and that's one of the biggest misconceptions and people that don't paint just don't understand. I think sometimes they think when we paint that the paint is automatically going to fix the dent and that's just not gonna happen. So what are we doing here? This is another little tip and trick I'm gonna give you guys in this video. We're taking about three ounces of our color, right? Not any sort of blending additive added to it. You can, you can tell I haven't used blending additive so far, but I'm gonna be using a blending additive here or a clear base. It's the same thing. And I'll link one in the description for you. And I about halved it. So I used about three ounces of base and then I put about 1.5 of our blending additive and I added about another 1.5 of our extra slow reducer. So what have I done here? I pretty much, I've taken that color and I've cut it in half. I made it more transparent. I only got one coat really on both of these doors. And I'm just gonna add one more coat over reduced and that's it. See you later, this thing is blended out. I don't even need to use the X pattern as much because it's so transparent. It's just going to hide your blend. Now you can do this over the whole coat if you want. I'm just doing it over the blend panels because I wanna make sure that it looks even more transparent. I used to, in the past, use your blending additive on the doors. I don't do that as much. Now what I did is I took you to the second coat of clear coat here, and I did tell you it is extremely hot in the paint booth, about 98 degrees. So you might see me doing several passes and moving slower. That is because the paint is not going on super wet. So you're gonna have to make those adjustments with your gun, depending on the temperature. And of course, we're using our slower reducer, but still at this point, a slower reducer and a slower hardener, but at this point, we just really need to watch the paint go on. By watching the paint go on, we're making sure that we don't have any sort of dry spots, right? If we have dry spots and we have to go back in and we have to add clear coat, that's just gonna be a mess. Now, as you move to your flatter panels, what you're gonna wanna do is change your overlap to around 80 to 90%. You really wanna lay it on, but you wanna watch as it goes on. We don't want any runs, any sags, so make sure you're putting it on as evenly as possible. The paint gun we're using here is a Devilibus DV1 clear coat gun. Now, the reason why I love this gun is because it operates at between 18 and 21 PSI. Now you can play around with those pressure settings if you like, but what I like is since it operates at such a low pressure, remember we talked about air drying paint? Well, here we have a slicker finish because we're lowering, lowering our pressure so much that we have a better atomization of the clear to the panel. I'll let you guys enjoy these last few scenes and get this thing wrapped up.
And as you can see, it came out stunning. Very beautiful finish with the DV1 and the DV1 clear. Blend looks great. And we did end up having our PDR tech come and fix up that dent. So this one is looking really, really good. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.